Even with all the publicity she's received since Game of Thrones premiered, there are still plenty of fun facts and discoveries to be made about the talented actress Amelia Clark, a singular talent who still has an extraordinary future ahead of her. Here are just a few of the untold truths about Clark's life and career. Thanks to her starring role in HBO's massive hit series Game of Thrones, Amelia Clark has become one of the most recognizable faces on television. Beyond Game of Thrones, Clark has appeared in other high-profile roles, too, including star turns in films like Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Terminator Genesis. So far, her most significant role has certainly been Daenerys Targaryen, otherwise known as Khaleesi and the Mother of Dragons. Game of Thrones is a notoriously fleshy adventure series, and Amelia Clark racked up quite a few nude scenes during the show's first season. In 2017, she told Actors on Actors, The naked stuff is always difficult. It's yeah. always kind of hard, because it's just uncomfortable for many, right. many, many reasons. As she told Entertainment Weekly, her life took a turn for the incredibly awkward when she wound up watching one of those nude scenes with her family. Whoops. I ended up sitting down with them and being like, let's watch it, and then instantly regretting it. My dad was like, again? Graham Norton was clearly tickled by that anecdote. Did you watch it with your parents? Yes. <laughs> Clark had no qualms about appearing nude on stage in a production of Breakfast at Tiffany's, which premiered at New York's Court Theater in 2013. Naturally, a big name like Clark drew huge crowds, including some exceedingly creepy patrons who took photos of Clark during her nude scenes. Unfortunately, the show was slammed by critics and closed after only 38 performances. It's too bad her first theatrical outing was tarnished by weird audience members and bad reviews, but at least now she's got a Broadway credit to her name and there will likely be many more in the future. After her breakout role on Game of Thrones, Clark was inundated with film offers, with one big franchise standing out from the pack. Reportedly, Clark was offered the lead role of Anastasia Steele in Fifty Shades of Grey, the first in a trilogy of theoretically sexy films based on the best-selling series of trashy novels. Ultimately, Clark decided to turn down the role, which famously went to Dakota Johnson, who starred alongside British actor Jamie Dornan for the entirety of the series. In a 2015 interview with KISS FM, Clark played a little bit coy about the decision. But is it true that you turned down uh, the Fifty Shades of Grey role? Oh, well, uh, uh, uh well, yeah. <laughs> Clark has explained why she made that decision. Fifty Shades could certainly have given her more exposure as an actor, but it wasn't the kind of exposure she wanted. After her history of nude scenes on stage and screen, Clark didn't want to be labeled as any specific type of performer. She says she really doesn't regret turning down the role. Considering the bleak critical reception the trilogy received, it seems like she definitely made the right choice. Add Amelia Clark's name to the long, illustrious list of tattooed celebrities. Clark's first tattoo was dedicated to her role in Me Before You, where she played a big-hearted caretaker who has a tattoo of a bumblebee. Well, guess what Clark got inked on her pinky finger? Uh, I got a bumblebee. Oh, and what is that? So badass! Like, it's actually kind badass of cool. going on a tattoo, what'd you get? A bumblebee. Bumblebee. Bumblebee, my thing. It's still got the plaster on it. Naturally, Clark needed to get a Game of Thrones tattoo, too. And guess what she went for this time? I was in a tattoo parlor the other day trying yes. to make an appointment, and they oh, said yes. that they were full because you're coming in <laughs> to get a tattoo <laughs> yes. of a dragon? Yes. Okay. Maybe they aren't the biggest dragons we've ever seen, but they are dragons. Clark was seemingly born to be an actor, considering that her father worked in the theater community in London as a sound engineer. The first show Clark ever saw as a child was Showboat. She was enthralled, falling in love with the theater right then and there. However, her dad wasn't quite so enthusiastic about her goals. In fact, he took her to a real audition in the West End in the hopes of scaring her away from the profession. She bombed completely, showing up unprepared with just a folk song to her name. As she continued pursuing her dream, Clark said her dad's only advice was to be aware of the many pitfalls of the profession. He reminded her that actors rarely make a living off their passion, and even told her that the only line she ever needed to memorize was, do you want fries with that? We're sure her dad had the best intentions, but fans around the world must be glad Clark kept at it. She eventually attended the prestigious Drama Center London, and the rest is history. Well, more or less. After graduating, Clark's acting career got off to a rather quiet start. She had a few bit parts in commercials and made appearances on British shows like Doctors and even a dreadful sci-fi original movie called Triassic Attack. In 2010, Screen International named her one of the UK stars of Tomorrow, and they were right on the money. She scored her audition for Game of Thrones shortly after that career milestone. But Clark still had to make sure her bills were paid. 
At the time she landed the role, Clark was reportedly working six jobs, including a gig as a real estate agent. Due to the importance of that particular audition, Clark called in sick to her catering job that day. Obviously, her efforts were well worth it as she booked the role of a lifetime and quickly became one of the most celebrated young actresses in the industry. Take that, catering job. The fact that Clark even got to audition for Game of Thrones is rather extraordinary, considering the pilot had already been shot by the time she got that fateful call from her agent. However, the original pilot was a dismal failure. Before you think that's too harsh a description, it comes from series creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who blamed unclear storytelling, melodramatic death scenes, and bad casting. They eventually reshot about 90% of the episode. The creators have politely declined to discuss why they recast the role of Daenerys, which was originally played by actress Tamsin Merchant, best known for roles like Katherine Howard on The Tudors. The original pilot never saw the light of day, and now it's impossible to imagine anyone but Clark playing Daenerys. Over the course of seven seasons, she's been nominated for several Emmy Awards and has made the role completely her own. She'll probably be referred to as the Mother of Dragons for many more years to come. Amelia Clark is the first to admit that her Game of Thrones audition took an odd turn. Prior to her audition, she'd spent hours scouring Wikipedia to learn more about A Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin's book series on which Game of Thrones is based. As she told Jimmy Fallon, showrunners Benny Off and Weiss asked Clark about her other talents after she'd read a few lines of dialogue. Then they suggested she do a dance. I just, I don't, I still don't know how to do it, but I did the funky chicken. And I kind of morphed into the robot, and I sort of heard, I heard some laughter going on. Afterwards, she evidently didn't feel particularly hopeful about the audition. Of course, she was cast in the role shortly afterwards. Clark may have gotten giggles out of the showrunners, but they still got a taste of the remarkable intensity she uses to bring Daenerys to life. In fact, it sounds like they were completely sold on her right out of the gate. Our certitude was as religious as Daenerys's. She was the one. Until recently, Amelia Clark kept one period of her life completely private. In a moving personal essay published in The New Yorker in March 2019, she revealed that she'd survived a very serious health scare. During a session with her personal trainer, Clark suffered a debilitating brain aneurysm. Only a third of patients survived what she endured. After a minimally invasive form of brain surgery, Clark learned that she had a smaller aneurysm elsewhere in her brain that could also pop. Shaky, exhausted, and partially reliant on morphine, Clark bravely went back to work and continued filming Game of Thrones. Then, in 2013, the second aneurysm burst, requiring a much more invasive surgery. An incredibly difficult road to recovery lay ahead. The second one, there was a bit of my brain that actually died. If a part of your brain doesn't get blood to it for a minute, it will just no longer work. In her essay, Clark writes that she's now, quote, 100% recovered. She also started a charity called Same You to help patients suffering from strokes and other brain injuries. As a professional actress and public figure, Clark's brave decision to speak out about the most difficult period of her life speaks volumes about her character. Despite her personal successes, 2016 was a difficult year for the young star. In the aftermath of Brexit, an issue near and dear to Clark's heart as a Londoner, she lost a family member shortly after the vote, and both situations set her adrift, personally and professionally. Clark's father had suffered from cancer for years and succumbed to his illness in July 2016. Sadly, she couldn't be there during his final days. While his health declined, she was filming a movie in Kentucky. After cutting the filming short, she finally arrived in London, only to learn that he had already passed away. This was absolutely devastating to Clark, especially since she was due back on the Game of Thrones set in three weeks. She told Rolling Stone that the experience only made her stronger. Since her father's death, she's praised the nurses who cared for him, vowing that she'd always support England's medical community from that day forward. In 2018, she became an ambassador for London's Royal College of Nursing, joining the school's ongoing campaign for financial support from the British government and the NHS. When a cast is sworn to secrecy while filming one of the world's hottest shows in far-flung locations, it's only natural that they'd become close friends. Clark is no exception. Daenerys started off the series with a wedding to Khal Drogo, played by future Aquaman star Jason Momoa. The two became fast friends while they were quartered in Morocco together. Though Drogo was dead by the end of the first season, Momoa and Clark have remained very close. In fact, they refer to each other as, quote, the moon of my life and my sun and stars. To this day, Momoa seems like one of Clark's biggest supporters, and fans are always delighted by their reunions, which have taken place at major award shows and Comic-Con, where Momoa made a surprise appearance that did indeed succeed 
succeed in startling Clark. Now, as the show ends, Clark will almost certainly be closing out her character storyline alongside Kit Harrington. He, of course, plays the brooding Jon Snow, the presumed bastard who is actually Daenerys' royal nephew and her lover. Yup. Luckily, she and Harrington seem to be having a great time together on set, especially when they're joking around about their love scenes. I mean, I think kind of ah, 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 might be the reaction. I like looking at her and going, oh god, I'm sorry. The pair have been friends since the first season, and each of them is excited to finish the series with a friend at their side. As Daenerys, Clark is no stranger to traveling through foreign lands, often on foot. At the beginning of Game of Thrones, she begins a long journey from the native land of the Dothraki warrior clan, located across the narrow sea from Westeros, in order to finally take back the Iron Throne of the Seven Kingdoms. She gets turned around several times over, ending up in Slaver's Bay and subsequently taking control of several slave cities before finally ending up in Westeros in the seventh season. Thanks to this storyline, Clark herself has gotten to travel to several exotic filming locations over the years, including Croatia, Ireland, Iceland, and Spain. Like her character, Clark became a world traveler at a young age. At just 16, she embarked on a backpacking trip through northern India, continuing into Tibet, having made the journey to scatter the ashes of her grandmother, who was born in Delhi. A few years later, she made a similar journey through Southeast Asia as well as South Africa, proving that she's just as adventurous as her signature character. No surprise there. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about Game of Thrones are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.